Bob Faro here. So what I want to do here with these videos is basically give you quick tips and tricks for uh, music production and sound engineering. Let's get started. So the, the thing that I have here is a session of my uh, new single, Your Last Breath, where I just enabled a few tracks. And I want to show you guys the problem that I ran into and how I solved it. So basically, whenever I do my drums, I use Superior Drummer for this. As you can see, looks like this. You have here the drum kit, grooves, you have the mixer here, where you could do all different kinds of processing. And you have the tracker where you can actually load real drums, transfer into um, actual MIDI notes, and then use these within uh, the software. So basically what I always do when I make music is, you know, I look for a nice groove and I change the MIDI notes to my liking. And then I start um, adjusting the sound. So to create the sound, um, basically what I do is we have the software here and you go to the mixer. You can see that my different instruments, kick, snare, toms, cymbals and ambience, go to a separate channel here in Studio One. So how I do this, whenever you select the preset here, this is my own, my own kit now, but uh, you know, you can choose a different, different preset. And then here you will see that they go to different outputs and normally this will be set to one and two. So the one and two will be just one track here where you can, you know, do some overall processing, adjust volume, do some automation here and there. But what I wanted to do is actually be able to, apart from making changes and doing EQ and stuff like that here, I wanted to be able to do this in my W and actually use the plugins that I normally use. So what I did is I selected a different output here, not a buzzer or anything from within a superior drummer, but an actual output this output three four five six seven and eight goes to here so you can enable it and you can see all right there it is um cool so basically what i use superior drummer for is actually to have your midi here and actually trigger the slate digital trigger that i have here on my channel there you go so as you can see i have a couple of samples running here you know, some of my own samples, samples from uh, the actual slate uh, trigger. So, but this allows me to actually do processing on the kick separately, on the snare separately, toms, cymbals, ambience. And if you'd like, I have toms all together in one bus. You can also have them separate, you know, like the floor toms separate and your other toms as well. Same with cymbals, for example, you can do it as, as crazy as you want. It doesn't matter. So, but I decided to, you know, kind of buzz them together, tom symbols and ambience to have a little bit more of an overview of the stuff that I do. So the problem that I ran into was the fact that, you know, as you can see down here, is that my CPU is super loaded. So if you see, I mean, I even disabled a couple of tracks and it's still super hot. So as you can see, my stuff here and what I do is I go, let's say to here, for example, so you have my track going on here. all right all very cool sounding so as you can hear now the kick for example or the snare goes through here but it also goes to some other buses as you can see here that's box going on and here in the master is also some processing but the problem is whenever I try to like make a new track, I always have to load these samples because otherwise I wouldn't have the sound. So what I decided to do was I opened my Superior Drummer. Um, we're here at bar 19. So what I did is I delete everything that's after this. So you can only hear the kick. What I did was, if here my master, what I did was I shaped it in such a way that it 
goes down. Can even make it shorter. And I'm going to create a sample of this. So what I did is I select a loop that starts precisely at 19. Here, stops in the middle of this bar. So now when I play this, I have a nice kick sample. So then I go ahead and create a sound kick sample. There you go. Always do this as a WAV file, 24 bit, 48 kilohertz in my case. You know, it's proper quality for sound recording and samples. I select between loop to make sure that I capture this on the timeline. I hit OK. Boom. Done. There you go. So here, as you can see, I have my sample. So what I do then, I do the same for everything. You know, same goes for the um, snare, for example. If you want to make a sample of the snare, I go to here. Do the same thing for the snare. The key command that I use is Command E to quickly go to bounce your track or what you can do as well is here, go to here, there you go. Export mix down. Okay, so now that we have this, again between loop, call this snare sample, wave 24 bit 48 kilohertz, press OK, exporting. Now you can do the same thing for um, for all the other stuff, for your tom separately, also for symbols if you'd like. But let's go ahead and, and see how I how I did this. So basically I did this for all of them already. So let's delete those for now. Cool. So as you can see, I here have these samples, which I transferred to my um, USB drive here under Varo drums and I put them all in there to be organized, you know. So the next step that I did is I opened a new Studio One file. As you can see, this looks way more more organized. You have these two channels here that are my drums and there's no other processing going on. Obviously, they're here my guitars, but they don't matter for now. And that's the only processing that goes on because I still wanted to shape it, you know, to the song and all these different kinds of elements that you will eventually add to your mix. So what I did then is I opened uh, Superior Drummer. So let me explain you this as well. So go to Instruments, take it, and then you drag it onto here. And then it appears here and it will create a channel. Okay, so here I have still the same drum kit um, loaded as I had in the previous session. The only difference is that I click right, doesn't really matter where, click right on an instrument and then you go to more and you can here see import audio file. When you click on this, this will give you the option to actually load a random sample, can be whatever you prefer, open it up and then you can see if you're kick here or you can add a stack, which means to the original sound, it will add another kick sample here to blend it with the rest or replace the sound. So we'll take away everything and only use your sound here, but it will still go through the processing of superior. Or you can choose to add an instrument, which I did, and then it will create a totally different instrument besides everything that's already in here and put them in here. So that's what I did, as you can hear, I have the kick, snare, toms, and so on. This thing you can find again here. This is the only problem here is that you don't have the possibility yet. I mean, it's at least what I read online to change the name of your actual instrument. So it's only called instrument one, instrument two, and so on. So I loaded a groove already. Let me show you. So when I play this, it starts to... So 
So as you can see here, you have all the instruments that are part of the Superior Drummer drum kit. Here you can find out all your instruments that are the ones that you imported into your system. So you can go and browse for something that you like. You will still hear the previous kit. I mean, for me, it doesn't really matter if it sounds bad or not, but it just to give me an idea of, of what the, the drum pattern is. Okay, let's like, let's go for a light rock. Uh, listen to this one. Then I load this one into here. What you do then, you see here it starts at 10. So we go to 10 here, so it starts there. All right, so what I do then is here you have the kick. Select like all of the kicks, make sure this one starts on the grid to make sure whenever I drag him, it's still in the same place. And then I drag him down. There you go, until I hit the kick. Same with the snare. So snare is only here. What I do now is the same here. I drag him down till I hit my kick sample that I just imported. Okay. So now when I listen back to this, you have your own samples. Oh, forgot this floor tom as well. Um, there you go, floor tom. Second last is here. So. And that's the same thing that I did here in the beginning. There you go, basically that's what I did. So um, this gives me way more options. Still what I did here is, so I have, you know, the different tracks going on here. All my samples, oh, excuse me, um, that starts from here to here. I don't watch these anymore because I don't use them anymore. You can delete them if you'd like. But what I still do is I still use my overheads and my my my, my symbols and hi hat are still, as you can see, part of the drum kit. So what I did for that is you see when it's playing, you can still see the hi hat going on here. And these go still through these outputs five and six. So five and six I have here enabled as a separate uh, separate channel so I can still do some processing on these and make them blend very nice with the kick and the snare. So as you can see, CPU is way lower now. You'll actually be able to do more stuff in your session without having to worry about the fact that it will overload. Okay, so yeah, that's basically it. Um, please let me know if you have any questions, if something was not very clear. This is my first ever YouTube video. Hope you guys like it. I will keep creating new videos and yeah, if there's anything, please let me know in the comments or hit me up on Instagram. And yeah, take care and have an awesome day. Peace. What you've awakened, it doesn't stop until it's chicken or that it's lost. Say your prayer, cause you won't speak again. You're taking your love.